Since the J-League kicked off in 1993, we've seen a long list of stars take center stage in Japan for some of the best clubs in the history of Asian football. Ten different teams have lifted the J-League trophy over the years, with the very first seasons dominated by a green machine in Verdi Kawasaki. The club now known as Tokyo Verdi lifted the trophy in 1993 and 1994, led by the phenomenal play of inaugural J-League MVP, Kazuyoshi King Kazumura. Their dominance was halted in 1995, though, as Yokohama Marinos beat Verdi over two legs, a tricolor triumph that painted Kanagawa red, white, and blue. Nineteen ninety six saw the beginning of an engrossing duel for J League supremacy between Kashima Antlers and Jubilo Iwata, who would together win the next seven titles, often decided in head to head championship clashes. The Antlers would finish on top in nineteen ninety six, nineteen ninety eight, two thousand, and two thousand one while the title would head to Iwata in 1997, 1999, and 2002, the year when Japan co-hosted the FIFA World Cup. The 1999 season brought particular joy to Jubilo as they downed local rival Shimizu S-Pulse in the championship and also were crowned Kings of Asia. As the mid-2000s came into view, so did new J-League powerhouses in an exciting set of title races. Two thousand three saw the guard change as the holders Jubilo were defeated by Yokohama F Marinos on the final day of the second stage, sealing their second title in dramatic fashion. Marinos would follow this up with another gripping finale in two thousand four, defeating Urawa Reds on penalties in the championship. The hero of the day was Tatsuya Enomoto, who denied stars Marcus Tulio Tanaka and Makoto Hasebe from the spot and gave Yokohama another day the city will never forget. The thrills kept coming in 2005 for fans with the most exciting conclusion to a season in the history of Japanese football. With five clubs capable of winning the title on the final day, Cerezo Osaka were in pole position and held a tense 2-1 lead against visitors FC Tokyo. As the 90th minute arrived, however, the Capital Club were awarded a corner kick, which they ultimately put into the back of the net and crushed the Sakura's hopes of silverware. So tight was the J1 table that season that Cerezo dropped from first to fifth place in an instant. And so cruel was the defeat that they not only lost the title, but handed it to local rivals Gamba Osaka for their first crown. <laughs> 2006 saw another first as success in Saitama was finally secured. Washington's 26 goals and Marcus Tulio Tanaka's MVP season gave Urawa Reds their first and only J1 title to date. After this point, though, it was a return to a familiar face at the top and a new dynasty for the old guard. Kashima were kings of J-League in 2007, 2008, and 2009, as a historic three-peat was brought to life by stars like Marquinhos in Mitsuo Ogasawara. Eventually, though, this would give way to an incredible chapter in J-League history. As Antler's dominance waned, a few fairy tale years followed, and a string of first-time winners arrived on the scene in spectacular fashion. Nagoya Grampus would lift the 2010 trophy under the direction of Dragon Pixie Stojkovic, 15 years after he won the Emperor's Cup with the team as a player. Kashua Reysal followed up with an even more surreal story, crowned as 2011 J1 champions the very first season after winning the J2 title in 2010. A few years later, Gamba Osaka would remarkably enjoy the same double celebrations in 2014, sealing a J1 championship a year after topping the second tier in 2013. 
Of course, there was a dynasty in Hiroshima to speak of during these years as well, though, as Sanfrecce took a trio of titles in 2012, 2013, and 2015. Under the direction of current samurai blue boss Hajime Moriyasu, a corps led by Hisato Sato and Toshihiro Aoyama hit an unforgettable purple patch and brought three titles to the Three Arrows. In 2016, it was a return to form again for Kashima, who took home their record eighth title, seven of them won with the great Ogasawara in the team. So remarkable were the Antlers that season that they also won the Emperor's Cup and took the great Real Madrid to extra time in the final of the FIFA Club World Cup. That, however, would be the last of Kashima's league titles, with a new dynasty set to rise in Kawasaki at their expense. Frontale had become famous for falling at the final hurdle over the years, but 2017 is where that all changed, with Kashima stumbling instead at the finish line. With the Antlers held to a goalless draw against Old Foe's Jubilo on the last day of the season, the door was open for Frontale to win the title on goal difference, which they did after thrashing Omiar Dija 5-0. Club legends like Kengo Nakamura and Yu Kobayashi rejoiced, but they didn't rest, leaving no doubt the following year that they were worthy back-to-back -back champs in 2018. Frontale would falter in 2019, with Ange Postacoglu's Marinos returning to reign supreme after a 15-year absence, securing the title on a dramatic final day in Yokohama. With second place FC Tokyo in town and capable of sealing the title with a four-goal win, Marinos were ruthless in closing the door with a 3-0 victory that brought the Tricolor back to the top. The title would stay in Kanagawa in 2020, but it would swing back to Kawasaki with Kengo Nakamura retiring on top in an unforgettable last act. In last season, a retooled and refueled Frontale weathered the departures of stars like Kaoru Mitoma and Aotanaka to comfortably win their fourth title in five years and stamp their names in Japanese football history as a veritable dynasty. What comes this year is anyone's guess, but there are already signs of a new era coming into view in 2022, with emerging stars leading exciting challengers for the title. Few competitions out there can match the competitive balance and thrilling drama of the J-League, and it's surely only a matter of time before another club adds their name to the long list of champions.